In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out a basic multiple regression analysis using M+. The data is actually uh, derived from the 2016 uh, American National Election Study, uh, where data was collected both pre prior to the election and uh, post-election. So I have data in uh, an SPSS file, and we're going to essentially convert uh, this uh, SPSS file into a format that is readable by M+. Basically, there are two file formats that M+, uh, can read. There's CSV file and DAT files. So unfortunately, there's no way to directly import SPSS data into M+, and so we have to essentially do this conversion prior to carrying out our analysis. So we have um, a set of variables um, in this data set right here um, that have been either recoded or um, computed from the original data set. And I'm going to start off by just demonstrating uh, how to uh, generate a CSV file. So to do this, what we're going to do is go to File, Save As, and, um, and essentially then what we'll do is um, click on this button right here for save as type and we're going to go down to comma delimited CSV. You'll also see that there are there's a DAT file down below and there's one above as well. So if we wanted to convert our file to one of those other one, uh, to a DAT format, we have those two options. But I'm going to stick with comma delimited and I'm actually just going to um, paste in the name um, uh, which is this one right up here anyway. And you'll notice that it says, uh, by default, it says write variable names to file. And we do not want this clicked. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click off of this. And what we're going to essentially be doing is generating a data file that just contains the variables with no uh, variable names associated with them. So I've clicked off of this. And we're just going to click on Save. And essentially, it's just going to overwrite this other file. And you can see that uh, we know that everything worked out fine. There's no error messages uh, that have come up. And just kind of taking a quick look at it, if I double click on, if I go to my um, drive and double click on uh, the CSV file, you can see what it looks like. So this is it right here. Uh, so we have uh, the variables at, in the order in which they appear in the um, SPSS data file. But you notice that there are no uh, variable names associated with them. So what we're going to do is um, import this uh, data set into uh, the M plus program and then and basically run our multiple regression from that. So to, what we'll do is we'll open up M plus and go to File, New. And so uh, basically a syntax editor opens up and we can type in our syntax. So I've already set up the syntax um, in a Word document. I'm just going to copy this and paste it over into the M plus uh, syntax editor. And so things to kind of uh, pay attention to. First of all, uh, in terms of typing in the syntax, uh, we have um, the, the, um, the words in blue uh, are basically the, ma the, the commands uh, for carrying out our analysis. So all uh, commands, um, are when you type them in, they're going to appear in blue and you're going to follow them up with a, col a, um, a colon. Okay, so you can see in the title line, I've just basically uh, typed in a name, um, which is uh, actually wrong considering what I was planning on doing. So I'm just going to type in uh, Republican candidate. And um, essentially what we'll do is, uh, that's, I mean, that's basically it. So next we have uh, the, the command data. And so this line right here is actually going to read the data from our CSV file into M+. So the data command, we have data colon, and then we have file is, and then we have uh, the you know we have the drive right here followed by a colon, and then essentially the paths leading to uh, the um, the actual uh, file, which is this right here. So um, essentially, this is nested under a couple of uh, subdirectories, and then we follow this line up with a semicolon. So the next line we have variable and then colon, and then we're going to use the options names are. And we have the actual names as they appear in the order in which they occur in our SPSS and CSV files. So we want to make sure that the names that we type in, uh, the order in which they appear, match the order in which they occur in the, the, um, our original data sets. If you don't do that, that's going to create problems in terms of 
uh, your estimates. So make sure that that is that, is, that the the uh, ver the names appear in the order in which they should in the or they they do in the original data files. So the next option is the use variables option, and this is utilized in those cases where uh, your analysis is only going to incorporate uh, just a subset of the variables that appear in the overall data file. So in this multiple regression, we're actually going to use income level, economic conservative beliefs, social conservative beliefs, and Republican candidate affect, um, or affect towards a Republican candidate. And so, um, so these are the only uh, variables that are going to be included. That's why we're using the use variables um, um, option. If uh, we were carrying out our analysis and we were going to use all of the variables uh, that appear uh, following the names R command, uh, then essentially we would not need to have the uh, use variables R uh, option um, indicated. Now notice that for these lines, this line right here for the data line, uh, again, we end with a semicolon here, we end with a semicolon uh, here, and we end up with a semicolon uh, right here. So, you know, each of the lines that uh, that we're going to incorporate are going to be followed up with a semicolon, except in cases where we uh, are essentially continuing a line uh, from one line to the other. Now, the reason why, you know, essentially I could have had uh, the, the variables kind of appear in this way right here. Uh, the problem is, is that by doing that, um, uh, M plus will not read the entire line. It will actually truncate the line. I think there are about 90 characters that you can have on a given line. So essentially what I did was I just I got to this point and just hit enter. And uh, the same uh, goes over here. I think I got to about right here and hit enter. Uh, and so we just had a continuation. And so the semicolon appeared on the last line for the original uh, set of uh, variable names. So the next uh, thing to note, we have model and then uh, a colon. So we have the model command, which is essentially instructing uh, the program to carry out our analysis on the basic model. So we've got uh, candidate, uh, Republican candidate affect variable uh, on the left side of the on, and then we have our predictors on the right side. So essentially, uh, the on, it kind of functions like the, the uh, equal sign in uh, the context of... Um, of using literal using the simplest command language where essentially you would have the dependent variable appearing on the left side of the equals and then the uh, independent or predictor variables occurring on the right side except in M plus instead of using equals we're just going to use on so we have um, representative uh, or um, uh, the candidate affect towards the Republican can essentially the Republican candidate affect re regressed onto income level uh, and then the economic and socially conservative beliefs variables, followed by a semicolon. And then I want standardized output, so uh, in addition to the unstandardized output, so I'm going to use the output command, followed by a colon, and then typed in stdyx semicolon. And so this will allow uh, the uh, standardized output uh, in the form of the uh, standardized regression coefficients and also the R-square values to appear as well. So we're all ready to go. So I'm going to click on run and it says save changes to this file right here. So I'm going to click on yes and I'm just going to actually save over what I've done previously and and um, there you go. So here we here we have it. This is our output. So as you scroll down you'll notice I get a little warning message. That's just because it says note that only the first eight characters of variable names are used in the output. So um, Essentially, it's just going to truncate the variable names uh, as they appear. So I'm going to scroll down. You'll notice that um, in terms of the uh, number of observations, that was the number of observations in the data set. Um, we were actually using a complete data set with all of the variables. So there's no missing data in this particular data set. Scroll down. The estimator that you see right here is uh, maximum likelihood. And scrolling down further, you get the univariate sample statistics for each of the variables means, variances, skewness and kurtosis, etc. Uh, you'll see that we also, um, there's a, a section for model fit information. This is not relevant in the context of a multiple regression, but this, er the, this information would be relevant if you're running a path analysis um, that, with a model that is um, over-identified. So as we scroll down, this is pretty much irrelevant, and we go down to the model results, what we get 
are the uh, unstandardized regression coefficients. So these are the unstandardized regression coefficients, the standard errors, um, you know, the, the ratio of the estimate to the standard error. So these are all going to be z-values. Z and then uh, the two-tailed uh, p-values. So you can see that of the predictors, uh, socially conservative beliefs was, this, was a, a positive and significant predictor of um, affect towards the Republican candidate. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit further, we get the standardized model results. So these are essentially the standardized uh, regression coefficients. And then obviously the strongest estimate is uh, for the socially conservative beliefs variable. You, we also have a significance test that's associated with that um, uh, as well. Scroll down a little bit further and we get the R-square value. So the R-square value um, for, um, uh, is uh, 0.10. Uh, essentially, the predictors, as I said, accounted for about 10% of the variation in um, positive affect towards the uh, Republican candidate. If we want to look at the uh, diagram, we can go up to diagram, view diagram, and this is what we have. So now we have um, you know, our various estimates, unstandardized estimates. If I want to see the, um, uh, the standardized estimates, I can click on this button right here, and those will, that will get me the standardized estimates for the model. So let's try now uh, one more attempt using um, essentially the DAT file. So let's create a DAT file instead. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and um, in this particular case, I'm just going to click on um, Save As Type and go down to Fixed ASCII uh, for the DAT. And then uh, this was basically what I had saved previously. So I'll just resave over that. So I'll click on Save. Uh, and yes, so now we have um, a DAT file ready to go. And so essentially I didn't change the names of it or anything. So I'm just going to leave everything as it was and instead just cha change this to DAT uh, to read in uh, the DAT file with this uh, name right here. So now when I click on run, um, it says save changes to regression example. I'll go ahead and save the changes. And um, there you go. So now you can see we have essentially, or basically, uh, the same results. It's just that now uh, I've run the analysis using the DAT file instead of the CSV file.